Hello and welcome back to Mystify, your go-to destination for mystery sci-fi movie recaps. Today we're diving into another episode of Black Mirror called Black Museum. Before we begin, I want to remind you that this video may contain spoilers. Without further ado, let's head straight to the story. Nish drives her car while humming and singing to the music. She stops at a charging station to recharge her car but she sees no one, so she uses her solar charger. Solar charging takes time so she looks around and sees the black museum. She tries to go inside but the door is still locked. A man eventually opens the door and tells her she is first in line. The man introduces himself as Rollo Haynes, the owner of the black museum. He tells her the museum is not for the faint-hearted. She tells him she can take it and so they go inside. Rolo checks Nisha's bag for security purposes. All is clear. As they walk inside, Rolo asks Nish about herself. She tells him she is driving to his dad's house because his birthday is coming. Nish looks around the museum. She asks Rolo what all the stuff in the museum are. Rolo answers authentic criminological artifacts. He adds that if something was used for something bad, it's in the museum and adds that everything has its own sad story. One device catches Nisha's attention and she asks Rolo about it. Rolo shares a story when Dr. Dawson failed to save a patient. Rolo offered him a technology that can receive human sensation. Rolo suggests that if he could feel what his patients were feeling, it would be easy for him to cure them. After Dr. Dawson received the transmitter, they ran a trial test on him and his girlfriend. Rolo pricked the girl's finger with a pencil. Dawson felt it immediately and correctly identified which finger his girlfriend was pricked. Dawson saved so many lives because of the device and he was having a great time with it in bed, as it allowed him to feel extra pleasurable sensations during intercourse. But one day, Senator Whitley was brought to the hospital because he had collapsed. Dr. Dawson had a hard time knowing what happened to the senator. He kept going until he blacked out for five minutes. He experienced death and came back from it but Dawson changed after that. The more he felt pain, the more pleasure he got. Rollo told Dawson they knew there would be side effects but they cannot just pull it out of him because they still have so many people in their lineup so he advised Dawson to stay at home. Dawson didn't have any patience to get the sensation anymore, so he started hurting himself and eventually, he attacked someone to feel pleasure. Rollo ends up in a hospital but he is in a vegetative state. After his story, Rollo feels so hot, due to the air conditioner not working, so Nish offers him a bottle of water and he drinks it all. Rolo shows Nish the teddy bear inside the museum. Nish tells him it's cute, but Rolo says it has the saddest story ever. Carrie got hit by a truck while trying to take a picture of Jack and Parker. She was confined at St. Juniper Hospital. Carrie, who's in a coma, responded to Jack while in the hospital using a communication box technology. Rolo approached Jack and told him they were trying something that could help Carrie to have a lease on life. It is a technology that lets them transfer Carrie's consciousness to Jack, and makes Carrie see what Jack sees and makes her feel what Jack feels. Carrie immediately agreed with Rolo's proposal through the communication box. As soon as Carrie's consciousness was downloaded and transferred to Jack, he could hear Carrie. Carrie saw their child through Jack's eyes. She asked him to hug him and she felt it. It was all good until Jack and Carrie started to argue with each other over small things and Jack started to look like he was talking to himself. Rolo suggested some elevated privileges where he could pause Carrie whenever he wanted. Jack was inside the elevator with a girl, and Carrie saw him checking her out. They had another argument, so Jack paused Carrie. When Jack unpaused Carrie, it's already been eight weeks. Carrie was upset about it. Jack and Carrie agreed on a sort of divorce agreement. Jack would pause Carrie for the whole week except on weekends. Soon, Jack started to date a girl named Emily. Carrie was bothering Jack, so Jack and Emily went to Rolo for advice. Rolo suggested they could delete Carrie, but Jack refused because of Parker. Rolo revealed another solution. 
He suggested they transfer Carrie's consciousness to a toy monkey. Carrie was unaware of the transfer until she woke up. Carrie wanted to go back to Jack's head. Carrie didn't like it so she takes the monkey and threatens Carrie that they can wipe her out if she doesn't cooperate with them. Carrie agreed but Parker eventually got tired of his toy monkey. Carrie is still inside the monkey in the museum. Rolo reveals the UN made it illegal to transfer consciousness into limited things such as toys and that it's illegal to delete consciousness. He adds that because of what happened with the toy monkey, he got laid off from TCKR, so he started the Black Museum. After that, Rolo reveals the prime exhibit. He shows him Clayton Lee, the weather girl killer. He visited Clayton inside the prison and offered him help. He insisted he would help Clayton's family. Clayton agreed and as he was executed, Rolo downloaded his consciousness into a little device. Clayton was born again in a cage in the Black Museum. Rolo experimented on him and made him a cash cow. People liked the feeling of pulling the lever and punishing Clayton. It gave a souvenir of Clayton experiencing the moment of execution. Rolo starts coughing non-stop and gasps for air. Nish starts to tell Rolo what really happened back then. There were protests and it hurt Rolo's museum attendance. Nish reveals to Rolo that Clayton's wife saw him and that she is Clayton's daughter. She greets her dad's digital consciousness happy birthday. She tells Rolo she found her mom dead after she visited the museum and she reveals she hacked the air conditioning system. The water Nish gave to Rolo might have been poisoned as well. As Rolo dies, she transfers Rolo's consciousness to his dad's virtual consciousness. She pulls the lever and leaves it until her dad is set free. Rolo's suffering is put into a little souvenir. Nish takes it and leaves the museum with the monkey. She burns the whole museum down and returns to her car. Nish talks to her mom's consciousness inside her. Her mom praises her and tells her she's proud of her. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a new release. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.